Doesn't us being here now mean it never happened? One of the main criticisms of Christopher Nolan's Tenet surrounds the limited backstory and emotional connection we as an audience have towards John David Washington's The Protagonist. Now, having rewatched the film multiple times, the director's puzzle box has become even clearer to me, and one of the things which has stood out involves why Nolan decided to take this approach and the reflection behind it. In this video, I'm going to be exploring how the protagonist in Christopher Nolan's Tenet is an allegory to movie audiences. This analysis will contain brief spoilers, so if you do happen to be someone who hasn't seen Tenet, then I would recommend watching this video afterwards. If you want to see much more on the film, including an updated ranked list for all of Christopher Nolan's filmography, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoy this video, remember to give it a like rating. Without further ado, let's dive into Christopher Nolan's Tenet and how it represents film audiences. Before I address the protagonist himself, I want to bring up something that heavily links into the idea of this video. This involves cinema being an audiovisual experience. Tenet as a film very much hones in on the experiential side of cinema, which expresses the medium's roots, and it doesn't try to add anything that becomes too much in order for you to care about the characters who are embarking on this mission. What I'm saying is that the general audience over the years has almost been conditioned to follow so much unnecessary context behind characters in modern filmmaking that it comes across as the filmmakers trying everything they possibly can to make you care. But what if the situation of the event is enough for you to actually care? What if the concept behind a film is something that is large and relatable enough to bring you along with the ride? For me, this is what Tenet as a film is trying to communicate, and it's a project in which we are given all the general building blocks that we need. With Inception, we had a film that gave us all the information, but also an emotional story behind Cobb, because the whole plot was personal. The success of the mission resulted in Cobb returning home to his children. In Tenet, however, the situation of the narrative is enough because although it involves the world's entropy and everyone being threatened, the concepts are ones which are not going to be fully understood by many individual viewers. Having a complex idea like in Tenet form the entire backbone of the narrative is something that you can focus and build on, while not adding an entire emotional grabbing backstory which could take away from the already high stakes and important relatable concepts that already situate within the film. Many films in recent years have fooled subject to this. I would recommend watching a video essay by Full Fat Videos as the creator discussed the example of Gravity, which I personally agree with. In Gravity, which I think is a fantastic film, you have huge stakes of life and death that is seen through the eyes of Sandra Bullock's character and the film does a great job through its effects, editing and production of making these moments as tense as they possibly can be. But like this content creator was saying, one of the things that has dragged the film down after many re-watches is that it plays up an unnecessary plotline surrounding Bullock's character losing her daughter. This would be fine if the film's action was surrounding the idea of parental loss, but when you have many scenes built around escaping destructive situations in space, I think this film would have been better by simply aiming in on the life and death situation that the audience themselves is watching unfold. Reversely, this is something that films like Tenet and Mad Max Fury Road do very well. They give you all you need to know and let the action drive the story. The survivalistic themes of both are heightened because they are at the forefront of the concepts and the motives of the characters operating within that story or world. Tenet may not have the best protagonist in a Nolan film, and I did think there was more room to explore his character, but I don't think it was necessary to fill the already high stakes and relatable plot themes of time with an elongated backstory that will just mis-aim the focus. 
In this way, a film like Dunkirk relates in when it comes to Nolan's most recent work, as it makes the audience care about the character simply through the tense situations and action that plays out. As Nolan referenced in The Secrets of Tenet book that came out a few weeks ago, the camera literally sees time. Before the camera, before cinema, there was no way for human beings to visualise either a still frame or reverse chronology by visually seeing things backwards. It's purely the product of the mechanism of the camera that allows us a great insight into reality or another way of looking into it. Cinema manipulates time, it gives us a story that takes place over different variations of time and presents itself to us resulting in reaction and interaction. Tenor is self-aware in that it tackles the concept of time, which is within the foundation of cinema and the audience themselves. With Tenet, Nolan has essentially made the audience feel time, and the situations and concept of the film is enough for us to follow the protagonist. But after underlining these important things about cinema and how audience watches cinema, this now brings me to the title of this video. To this day, Inception is my favourite film of all time, and over many years of re-watching the film, the idea of it representing movie making has remained on my mind. I have done a whole video on this topic a few weeks ago, and the messages are ones that get to the heart of movie production and creating worlds on screen. But with Inception being an allegory to making movies, for me, Tenet is an allegory to the experience of watching movies, and in particular, the film audiences themselves. With Tenet being an audience-driven experience and making obvious to us the manipulation of how a viewer witnesses a story or plot unfold through time, the main character is the access point that allows this to happen. In Tenet, the protagonist is the blank slate that adapts to extreme situations and is thrown into a world which he doesn't fully understand, while also going along with what is thrown in front of him, just like the audiences through the imagery of a film. Right from the beginning of Nolan's film, we are plunged into a tension-filled event where the audience of an opera house is literally put to sleep, and the protagonist, being one of them, scrambles amongst the seats to stop the threat. This is until the rug is pulled from underneath him and he is introduced to time inversion, a concept that isn't fully understood by the traditional moviegoer because it hasn't been visualised on screen before. This is the power of cinema, a medium which has the capability to show us things in a heightened format, but still make us go along with that ride and believe we are the character reacting to the situations. Nolan did this without a huge character backstory or emotional reflection, because he wants you, the audience, to feel like you are in the shoes of that character as he witnesses inversion firsthand. A character which cannot fully comprehend to begin with the nature of the concepts being thrown at him, but one which also has just enough human relatability to make the audience connect and follow the story through him. The side characters, and primarily Elizabeth Debicki's cat, act as these vehicles that allow the viewer to relate emotionally. The protagonist, or the audience, looks at these situations just like John David Washington does in the film, and reacts while trying to comprehend what it all means. Based on the puzzling variety of reactions to Tenet, I think this effect has played out in exactly the way Nolan intended. He challenged the audience and himself as a filmmaker to create something that hasn't been seen on screen before, and to tell it simply through the situation and the experience of watching it all play out. Now although I don't think Tenet is Nolan's strongest film, I think it's exactly the movie he needed to make in his career. One that combines the elements of what many Nolan fans like myself enjoy, but then also one which questions the experience of watching a film. As the protagonist is asking many questions during the runtime of the plot, and questioning those around him such as Neil, the audience is also questioning the film on many different levels. We question the story itself, the way time is used to tell that story, the nature of the protagonist in that story, and the point and message behind it. 
I think that the answer to many of these questions isn't there, because like The Prestige and Inception, the film is a kind of magic trick in that regard. You want all the answers and you may guess what they are, but the point is the questioning itself. When we watch cinema that grabs us, it plants an idea in our mind that carries through into reality. Whether it's the messages, the idea of entertaining set pieces, or the emotions and feelings of a character that we relate to. Tenet is an example of a few films that turn these questions inside out, because it appears as almost self-aware. In the format of stereotypical roles being used within the construct of a spy film, the individual character growth and emotional connection is limited because they serve the events which are already huge in scope and concept. And adding to this would only defeat the purpose and lower the questioning at the heart of what Tenet is about in the audience's mind. Time inversion is this central concept. Its intriguing nature and prominence in the story is enough to make the viewer question how it all functions and how the characters are involved within that. This is all driven by the focus of capturing a cinematic experience. The film does so through imagery which showcases the way in which time can be used in a film and how the audience's perception of the ideas change with the manipulation of time. Nolan aimed his focus with Tenet and centrally tackled the theme which he has been fascinated with in many movies. He wrote a narrative which fascinates the audience because everyone has to deal with time. The film may have many problems which I have addressed and agree with in regards to certain talking points like the sound mixing, but the heart of what Tenet was made to be as a film has been pulled off. Having increasingly enjoyed the film and questioning its concepts on every single rewatch, I believe the length of time will determine how we feel about Nolan's newest film, alongside our deeper questioning of what the director actually crafted. This is the kind of cinema that I like because it doesn't bow to the traditional. It makes us think outside of the box and therefore it gives the audience something they haven't seen before. Just like the protagonist in Tenet. But that was my video exploring the motif behind the audience experience of Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Although I've currently seen the film four times, as I said before, I think the more you rewatch it over the years, the more this idea will become clearer as an impactful message. It's an approach that I think a lot of audiences weren't ready for, and I think Tenet is a film that is built to last. Nolan has made this clear in interviews and in the production notes found in the Secrets of Tenet art book that I've currently had the pleasure of reading. But let me know down below what you thought of this Tenet analysis and also what you think towards the way Tenet approaches the audience. For more videos on Tenet over the next few weeks then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also if you enjoyed this video remember to leave a like rating. I will be doing an updated ranked list of Christopher Nolan's movies very soon, so make sure to keep a lookout for whenever I post this video, alongside many other uploads. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it, I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.